Okay, we ended the last tutorial with an exercise. We wanted to write something to a file using Node, right? We want to write a string, hello world, to a file and save it. Now, how do you go about doing something like this? I'll show you the process. So first, you need to figure out what the API is for writing something into a file in Node.js, right? And your go-to guide for figuring out what the API is is nodejs.arg slash API, right? So this gives you the APIs for the current version. Now here, we need to figure out if there is something for accessing the file system, right? Saving a file in the file system. As it turns out, there is a file system link over here, right? You can also see there should be something on the left-hand side. Yeah, there is a file system over here. That sounds promising. Let's give this a shot. I click on it. There here you see there is a bunch of methods. There is file paths, file descriptor, directory, okay. It's not what we want. We don't want to save directories. We want to save a file. I'm going to keep scrolling down. And then there is a write stream, which sounds promising. Okay, let's keep looking further. There is a write file, write file sync, which looks like what we want. I'm going to click on write file. Okay, what does this do? When file is a file name, asynchronously writes data to the file, replacing the file if it already exists. This is awesome. This is exactly what we want, right? So what does this API look like? It's fs.writefile, okay? And then I'm gonna give it the argument file, which is a string or a buffer or a URL or an integer, the file name or the file descriptor. In this case, we're gonna give it the name of the file. Let me call it greeting.txt. Okay, that's the first argument. The second argument is the data. Data is, I'm guessing, what should be written, all right? So data can be a string or a buffer. Okay, so that's what is gonna be written into the file. So the first argument is the name of the file. The second argument is what needs to be written into the file. Options, we can ignore because it's optional. We'll look at optional arguments later. The fourth argument is a callback. The callback is common in a lot of Node.js APIs. We saw that in the in the read line uh, API as well. So the callback is this function over here. It's the function that gets called after the API is successfully executed. Remember the asynchronous model of Node. You don't wait for something to be done. You don't wait around for a file to be saved, a file to be written. This thing didn't wait around for you to enter the input, right? Uh, this showed the prompt, and while I was entering my name, this wasn't holding up the thread. It just had a callback. It was basically saying, hey, this guy is taking his own sweet time writing his name. When he's finished writing, call this function and pass whatever is written as an argument to this function. That's what this did, right? You have a similar thing for the file API as well. This is not hanging around. It says, I'm going to give you a callback, and then in this execute this callback if there is an error in this case. So the callback takes in an error argument. This error argument as a callback is also a common thing in Node.js that we will see uh, often. But in this case, this is what the callback is. The callback is basically saying, I'm going to save this to the file. I don't have anything to return. But if it fails for some reason, I'm going to execute this callback with the error. OK, that's good enough. Now I'm going to try out this API. OK, now what do I have to import first? What do I have to require? This is the first thing, right? You don't get it by default. You need to require it so that you get a handle to that API. OK, so look at the first line. I'm requiring FS. The FS module provides an API for interacting with the file system, right? So I'm requiring that FS module. I'm going to copy this over. And uh, let me actually create a new file. Greet to file.js. I'm going to require the file system so that I have this fs to call. Now that I have this, I'm going to search for the right file. Again, here it is. I am going to do fs write file. This is actually demonstrating a, a buffer, but we don't need that. You can uh, pass a string as this guy says. Data can be a string, so I'm just going to pass a string. So I'm going to do fs.writefile. 
here's a cool thing about Visual Studio Code. It does autocomplete for Node API, so that's super handy as well. So what's the first argument? It's a the path, which is a string. I'm going to use single quotes. Uh, the path, which is a string, I'm going to call it greeting.txt. OK. And then the second argument is the value that gets saved. In this case, I'm going to call it hello world. All right, so this is the string that I want to save to the file. The third argument is a callback, which accepts an error as an argument. So I'm going to have an error callback, which basically prints to the console. Error occurred when writing to file. You can handle the error however you want. But this is basically writing a file to the file system using node. All right, let's check this out. Say node greet greet to file dot js. Guess what there's an error? Because I have to see if the error actually exists. Only then print the error occurred. I'm sure there was an error here. Um, I'm going to delete this file. You see here, it's actually printed that. So let me try this again. OK, now in the callback, I'm checking if the error object actually exists. Then I'm going to print that an error occurred. OK, then error did not occur. The error object was empty. And now here, there is something printed to the console. right? Now let's enhance this to take in the username as an argument, uh, as, an, as a user input, and then save the user's name in the greeting. All right. So here's how I do this. I'm going to break this down into two functions. I'm going to say a uh, function, let's say I call this const write to file. I'm going to say write greeting to file, which takes a name as an argument. And then I'm going to use that name here. And I'm going to use a backtick string so that I can parameterize the string. Uh, if you're not familiar with backtick string, I definitely recommend you check this out. Uh, it's pretty handy. I'm going to use name like this. And I'm going to use the arrow key notation to mark this as a function. OK, I'm going to format this document. So basically, what this is doing is it's created a variable called write greeting to file. The value of the variable is a function that takes a name as an argument. And then when this function executes, it writes to greeting.txt the message hello name, whatever is the name that's passed in. Basically, what I did just now, wrapped in a function. OK, I can call write greeting to file with Kaushik. And this should work like you would expect. It should take in the name. right? But what we want to do is accept user input. How do you accept user input? We've already done this. We do read line, and we do this. All right, so I'm going to copy this over. I'm not calling this directly here. I'm going to copy this over to initialize read line. The best practice when you're dealing with multiple requires is to move all the requires to the top. Okay, this is commonly done, so I recommend doing that as well. It's good to see what are all the requires that you have at the very top of the script. So what I want to do now is use this read line, this RL object, to read a name from the prompt, okay, which is over here. I'm gonna copy this over and paste this here. And up here, I'm not going to print something to the console. Instead, let me close this up front. So I don't need that anymore. I've got the name. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this function instead. All right, I'm gonna call this function and I'm gonna pass name as an argument. Right? 
we know that this writes to the file. Okay, so this is basically what I did earlier, but instead of printing to the console, I'm writing to the file. Okay, so if I were to run this, it's gonna ask me for the name. I'm gonna say foo. And if I were to look this up, there you go. It's taken that name and it's written that to file. Okay, so this was an example of using not just one API, but two APIs and that two together at the same time by using the require and um, looking up the documentation, right? So when you're learning Node.js, you're gonna be doing a lot of this. So get used to it. It's not that bad, though. the documentation is pretty good. So hopefully you'll have a good time searching for what you need. But then once you get, get a hang of it, the common APIs you will remember and you'll just directly start using. So this is how you use APIs. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can use third-party libraries. So this is the Node.js API, right? What comes out of the box with Node.js. But what if you wanna use some third-party libraries? In order to tackle that, you need to learn about this other utility called NPM. If you remember, when we installed Node on our machines, we looked at two utilities. One was Node command line utility as well, which is the Node interpreter. The other was this thing called NPM. Check out this next tutorial where I explain to you what NPM is. So we'll see you there.